Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I've got Plex running here on my Android tablet because we're doing yet another sponsored video from Plex where we take a deep dive into one of their features and today we're going to be taking a look at Mobile Sync which allows you to uh, click the download button like I just did here and download media from your Plex server onto your phone or tablet so you can take that stuff with you on the road. I'm going to show you how it works and how to get it all set up and all of that good stuff here in just a second. Now I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they've had no input into the editorial content of what you're about to see here. They're not reviewing this content before it is posted, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So we're going to be doing today's demo on an Android tablet, and the reason is is that Android supports SD cards for downloading your media. That's something you can't do on iOS. So we're going to start off with that configuration, and then uh, everything else you'll see will be applicable to other platforms, including the iPhone and anything else that uh, supports this download feature. Now, you definitely need to have a Plex Pass subscription uh, for this feature to work, but when you have that subscription set up, you will notice a new icon on your media page here, a little download icon, and I'll pull up a larger image here so you can see what it looks like, and uh, what I could do, for example, if I wanted to right now, is just click that download icon and grab the entire second season of The Expanse, but what, what I want to do first, though, is go up to that upper right-hand corner menu, uh, go over here to sync status, I'm going to click on the gear icon just to get into our sync settings, I believe you can find this through the main Plex settings also, and because we're on Android, and because we have an SD card installed, I'm just going to make sure that my sync storage location here is selected to go to that card. So internal storage, I've only got a gigabyte free, so I've got a lot more space available on that external card. I'm going to select that option, and now uh, whenever I download media, it will put it on the card versus the internal storage that is uh, pretty much out of space at this point. Now, one other option that's applicable to all platforms here is the use mobile data option. I have it checked off right now, but if you want to use your uh, cellular connection to download stuff while you're on the road, uh, you can check that box on and be able to do it, by, but by default it is off so you don't accidentally uh, run over whatever data caps you might have. So if you're on one of those new unlimited data plans, uh, you can safely check that box on and download to your heart's content. All right, so now that I have everything configured, let's take a look and see how we can download stuff to our device. And right now you'll see that I have season two of The Expanse pulled up here and I have a download option which allows me to actually grab the entire season if I want. And there are some filtering options also here. So I could say only give me the episodes that I haven't yet watched. There's also an item limit here. So I could set a, a custom limit to say maybe only give me uh, five or six of the episodes that I haven't watched yet if I want to limit space or bandwidth. So you have some options there when you're doing a a bulk download to prevent anything crazy from happening. But what I'm going to do, though, is just go into an individual episode just to show you uh, some more of what you need to think about when you're downloading. So I'm going to click on uh, the download icon here for episode five, and you'll see I have less options here because I'm only downloading one particular video. And by the way, these will be similar options that you'll see if you're downloading an individual movie, for example, as well. And the big option here, the only option really, is to determine what the video quality is that we're going to download. So as you know, on Plex, one of its key key features is that it can make your videos smaller on the fly. So if you are not home and want to watch something remotely over the internet, it will in real time shrink down the size of that video file using compression and send it out over the network. And you can do a very similar thing here when you're downloading. So for example, I could download the original file. Perhaps that might be the way to go if I'm on my uh, local network here and it doesn't have a bandwidth restriction and I have an SD card here installed on my uh, device to download that large file. But maybe I want to do something a lot smaller smaller than that, uh, maybe a 480p file here at 1.5 megabits per second. Now the video quality is not going to be so great on that, but if I am bandwidth impaired or have limited space on my device, that will allow me to fit more onto my device or at least download more stuff with the bandwidth limitations that I might have. So I'm going to uh, select that option and click on save here. And what it's going to do now is communicate with my server and it is now queued it up for syncing. I'm going to go over here to sync status and you can see what's going on here. Now, uh, key item right now is that it says it's converting and as you know in Plex world uh, when you are playing something over the internet again it's transcoding that video making it smaller in real time so there isn't usually much of a delay to get your media started it's basically transcoding on demand here but in this instance because we're downloading it's actually going to convert the entire 
file over first and then transfer it to the device here. So this will take a little bit longer and you need to plan accordingly. So if we had downloaded that entire season, we'd have to wait for my computer to do all the transcoding on all of the videos that we requested before they get copied over. So this is not going to be something you're going to do when you're just about ready to walk out the door to the airport. You're probably going to want to do it the night before, maybe initiate all of this synchronization to occur then. Uh, so that way, at least you have your media with you when you get on the plane here. So uh, you can see here that it's converting at 4.7 X right now, which means that it's running about 4.7 times faster, or in this case now 5.1 times faster than real time. So every, uh, basically it's it, every five seconds is being uh, transcoded every one second here. So it is running faster than the video might play back in real time, but it's still going to take a little bit to convert uh, this 45 minute episode over for us to download. Now the cool thing about how this feature works is that you don't have to babysit it. So once that conversion process is done, it will then copy the file over to your device. And if you've got a bunch of them queued up, all those files will process in the background on your Plex server, wherever it's located. And those files, after they're converted, will then be pushed to your device, whether you're in your home or if you're halfway across the world or in orbit somewhere. As long as you've got internet access, you are going to get your files synced up, which I thought was a, a really neat feature of this. Now, another thing we can do here, if we want our file faster, is uh, just download the original version of it. So I know that this file isn't all that big. It's a 720p file that I think I grabbed off of my DVR, so I can just go over to uh, the download option here, and instead of selecting one of these uh, different video formats, I can just say, give me the original file, and click on save here, and if I go over to sync status after this gets queued up, it should come down pretty quickly. So I'll go back over here to our sync status. Now you can see here that although there is some converting going on, it has to make it compatible for the mobile platform. It is moving a lot faster because it looks like it's probably not transcoding video. Maybe it's muxing audio or doing something like that. So a lot of times the original will come down faster, although if you are using a NAS as your Plex server, this might still be a slow process. This is the one thing that's not quite perfect yet, is that you don't get the actual original file. You get uh, some converted version of it. Sometimes it just comes over very, very quickly like we're seeing here, but uh, your mileage may vary depending on what you're trying to copy over to your device. Now, when those files are downloaded onto your device, it will default to those even if it has a connection back to your Plex server. So if you are away and you want to uh, browse some of the stuff on your server but not use bandwidth to play things back, uh, you'll notice if you go over here to the uh, icon view here that you'll have these little download icons next to the episodes that have been downloaded onto the device here. So this one, uh, episode two, episode six, and episode five all have those icons, which means that there is a file stored on our SD card, and I can then uh, click on one of those here to play it back. And of course, we'll get the lower quality file here in the case of episode five, because uh, that was the one we converted to 480p, but uh, it does nonetheless work, and it will default again to local storage versus using the network. Now, now, if you are offline and don't have an internet connection, of course, you can't browse your Plex server, but there is a local browsing option that you'll have available to you. So if for some reason you get stuck and Plex is saying it can't find your server, uh, just tap on this option here in the upper left-hand corner. It will show you all the uh, servers that your tablet is paired up with or your phone is paired up with. And I can then just select the local and synced content option here at the top. And now you can see I've got the expanse in here. I can go through and browse all the episodes that it downloaded. I've got two here. It looks like episode six now Ever finished copying before I killed the Wi-Fi to it, but I can, of course, go over here to episode five, hit the play button, and everything will start playing. You can also see that it kept my bookmark from when I was watching on my main server, and uh, where I left off after I hit the stop button later will then uh, sync back to the server when the device gets a connection once again. And you can also manage this stuff from a computer using a web browser. Now, the computer cannot download the synced content, but it can manage it as well as send it off to different devices that you have connected to your Plex account. So right now I am browsing season two, episode three of The Expanse. I've got an option here for sync. Again, this is because I'm a Plex Pass subscriber. I can select my tablet here as the destination that I wish to send it to. And then I've got the same options that I had before. So I can click on sync here. And what that's going to do is start the syncing process on my server. And if I go over to my tablet screen now, uh, you'll see that it's getting uh, some conversion started for season two, episode three. But I initiated all of this from the computer, which I thought was pretty useful.
SQL. And then I can go back to the computer here, I go over to the syncing status that we can find uh, in the settings screen, and I can see what else is currently being synced to that particular device. And if I wanted to, I can remove this episode from the tablet. So I can click on the X here and remove it. And uh, once I do that here, it will uh, presumably, there it goes, it's gone already, uh, disappear from the tablet device also. So really neat and uh, very convenient way to kind of manage what uh, you've got out there on different devices that are connected up with your Plex account. So this does have some degree of moderate complexity to it, but I think once you get the big picture as to how it all works, it actually is a lot easier than having to manage the files yourself and copying them to SD cards and finding a media player. Uh, here, everything just kind of syncs up the way that you're, you're used to it doing uh, when you are on a network connection. So when you are out on the road with your tablet device, for example, uh, you can go ahead and watch stuff. And uh, what's really neat, again, is that if you, uh, maybe if your DVR downloads or copy or records or whatever it does, an episode of a favorite TV show while you're on the road, uh, you can initiate this process before you go to bed. And in the morning, when you get up to take your flight, it will have made that conversion, copied that file over the internet to your device, and it'll be waiting for you uh, in an offline capacity so you can watch that content on the plane. It's a really nice way to manage stuff, and I think it's a pretty cool feature. So that will do it for this month's uh, sponsored video from Plex. Please uh, join me in thanking Plex for their support of the channel. And if you have any questions, do leave them down below in the comment section. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.